welcome back to the channel and today I want to use the new aiming turrets or the aiming servos to see if I can create a mouse controlled sword swinging mech. Now I don't even know if this is really something that works even in theory yet. It's one of those things where I'm just going to have to build a prototype and see what happens. But the idea is that uh, by moving the mouse around, I want the sword to kind of follow what I'm doing. So I want to just be able to like slash, like do stuff, but I can already imagine some very severe limitations because like rotation isn't a thing. Like as far as like wrist rotation, isn't really going to be readable by the servos because all they're going to do is look at where my camera is looking and try to point in that direction. So how to translate that to a arm with multiple joints? I don't know how it's gonna go, but I just wanna, the idea popped into my head and it's one of those things where I just think the process of building it is going to be what tells me whether or not this is something we wanna, that, that is even like doable. All right, so I'm just giving myself a nice base to work with here that's going to keep me nice and stable because it's very, very heavy as I swing things around. All right, so let's take our first joint, which will be our shoulder joint. And the way I'm gonna do this is the servo will be off by default. And then since this is my right arm, when I right click, it is going to turn on the servo. And I'm not gonna have it on toggle, I'm gonna have it on push button. Yes, yeah, so now when I right click, it activates the arm to essentially aim where I'm looking. All right, I don't like, I don't know if this has potential or not. This is really up in the air right now. But once I add the second joint in here, things are either gonna be really cool or very awkward. Maybe both, they're not exclusive. Cool and awkward <laughs> can happen at the same time, right? Leave a like on this video if you identify as cool and awkward. All right, so we got upper arm and then we need the elbow joint. You know what? We, we need a sh we need the shoulder joint needs to be more than this. We need to be able to lift up and down, but also like out. Do we want that? Because like if we're gonna this right now, the way that I'm doing it can really only swipe forward. I really want like an angular swiping ability. So I want another one of these then. It's going to be facing that way. You can see I can actually aim it left and right. There we go. Um, but I'm going to separate it a little bit from the body like that. That gives me a little bit more range of motion. Okay, this is kind of working. I mean, if we're being honest, like, we also would technically need this axis of rotation too, because a shoulder, it's a, it's a ball joint. It can rotate in all three axes. Is this practical though? Like, how would this, how would this apply to my camera? Yeah, see this one... I tried to add it in, but because it's kind of facing perpendicular to my direction of my line of sight, uh, it doesn't have a, that much of a precise angle of movement, you know? I think it just confuses it more than anything. So let's just cancel that one for now. Just keep these. All right, so now I need my elbow joint. All right, let's see what this does. All right, so it does bend the arm. So it's gonna like pretty much keep it straight almost all the time. All right, yeah, so the issue I'm having right now is when I do this motion, I want the elbow to go back like this, but it's just gonna point in that direction kind of no matter what, isn't it? Unless, what if I rotate this to face up? Problem is now it's not attached to this. Unless I move it this way. Wait, what? Now I, I can see it rotating, but it's not rotating the actual, this part. So like that's attached there, and then this is attached to the face of this, so it should rotate. Wait, why isn't it rotating the arm? Oh, this is actually kind of cool. Like even in first person, like it kind of, it, it looks good in first person. But you can see that that servo is rotating, but the arm is clearly, oh, I see why this is attached to the other side of it. That is why. Okay, now, yeah, there's clearly some issues happening. Oh, that needs to be set on different angle limits. Let's just set it on full range right now. All right, well, that's clearly not, doesn't look right. All right, yeah, this is definitely having some limitation because 
it's based off of where my camera's looking. Now my camera's looking that way, so this is, pre it's pretty much just always gonna point the arm directly where I'm looking. Like that's kind of the problem with it right now. If I'm thinking about the actual mo motion of like a swing, if I do a wind up like this, then this servo at the elbow is essentially pointing back and this servo is pointing that way. They're pointing in two different directions, which will not work with the way that they are camera controlled. And for some reason, this shakiness happens. So maybe this joint needs to be uh, not camera servo, but we need to somehow program it to work with the camera servo. All right, I went ahead and built myself a sword here. Let me color it so we can distinguish it a little bit better. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, so we got a bit of a problem. The aiming servos have a weight thing where like, uh, I think the big thing isn't just the aiming servos. Like if I get rid of this aiming servo right now and just attach this one aiming servo here, I'm pretty sure our problem Okay, our problem isn't like gone. That's pretty cool, like a blocking motion there. But uh, the the correct, like the the stabilization of the aiming sword. I think it's because I have the speed up too much, maybe. I mean, it's trying to aim where I'm aiming, but I feel like the the strength settings need to be bo boosted a little bit. All right, if I go speed slow. All right, now oh no, it's not. It's having trouble holding the position. All right, and I'm pretty sure that's gonna get amplified when I add the other servo back in here. All right, so now the problem is uh, I can kind of do like the swiping motion I want, but everything's in slow motion because I can't, if I have the servos on a faster speed, it wobbles too much. Even when I go slow, it wobbles. All right, even when it's off, like it's in the off position right now, the servos are still wobbling. Why? Now I look like a very scared soldier. Right, I'm gonna try putting a gyro in here. This is just gonna be on max strength and hope that it'll like dampen some movement. No controls are gonna go into it. All right, that doesn't seem to help. It still wobbles when it goes back to zero for whatever reason. All right, so now that I'm doing this in slow motion though, I am noticing that one motion that I do want is like a wrist action to open up the sword as it as it comes down, and I don't think aiming servos are gonna be able to accomplish that. Aiming servos will keep the sword in the same orientation no matter what, because the arm is always gonna be pointing in that direction. So I'm trying to think of right now, is there a way I could have a rotating servo be programmed so that it'll respond to what I want it to do depending on where the arm is in space? Because right now the elbow joint is just when I when I activate it, it just sets it at 45 degrees. It's not moving from 45 degrees, and honestly, like it doesn't even look that bad. Like if your arm just if your elbow just stays at 45 degrees, I think it's more the wrist motion that's gonna sell the sword swing. But we we also have this shaking issue, which I don't know if I'm gonna be able to overcome either. By the way, how cool is this smoke trail device as like a sword handle or a uh, pommel? I kind of want to put a decal on this as like an engraving. That looks pretty cool. All right, um, what to do about everything else though? All right, so now you can see that this can rotate in the wrist. If I raise the arm up and then if I swipe, see that we want that to go along with the swipe. So then how do I get it to come to this position when the arm is up? And then as I go down, it goes to that position. Like there are ways I could see to do it that have too many dependencies. Uh, for example, if I use an altitude sensor and then if the arm is up like above my head, then it rotates the servo one direction. Then as the arm goes back down, it rotates the wrist in the other direction. The problem is the altitude sensor, it's not relative to my body. It is relative to the world or the waves. So I need some type of sensor relative to my body. And I don't know if I have that. The other thing is like, if we use a distance sensor, we will need some type of designated signal on my being, on my, on my body that tells the sword where it's at which could potentially work, but it's not ideal. Angle sensor could do it. So if I put an angle sensor in the arm, yeah, actually in this part of the arm could definitely work. Oh, we don't need that anymore. 
right, I'm going to put it right here. All right, you know what? I'm going to set this to measurement or normalized maybe. And now let me do a number display. This is going to output to the number display. So now we can actually see. All right. So when it is up here, it's like above 60. We go down to there, which is like... 30. So between 60 and 30. But now, what can I do with that information? I know what I want to happen with the information. As the arm gets closer to 60, the wrist is closer to 90 degrees. And then as the arm gets closer to 30, the wrist gets closer to like 45 degrees or 30 degrees or something. But how do I tell it to do that? It's interesting. There are some logic blocks that have functions that I want in like other logic blocks. So for instance, the comparison logic gate has a clamp option which clamps the input between negative one and one that's kind of almost what i want but like the opposite of clamping i want to expand to negative one and one because right now this angle sensor outputs i mean obviously the angle between a value of zero and one but i want to clamp it in the way that 60 is one and 30 is zero and then the randomizer block kind of has like an input defines range which i was confused at but the comments were telling me that it's probably like if it if it takes multiple inputs like a high and a low input it'll randomize between the range that designates the range that it'll randomize in between so it'll do something in between those two inputs so i want the 60 and the 30 i want to define that i want to define that as my range so then I can have a hundred uh, uh, output of one at 60 or an output of zero at 60 and then an output of one at 30. But I don't know how to do that with what I have. And I'm pretty sure I can. I'm pretty sure it's possible. It's just I don't have the I don't have the familiarity right now with it just yet. So I'm thinking I'm doing a think right now. But a lot of nothing is coming up in my brain. All right. But the other big issue is uh, if we want if we want this to have any sense of like speed in the swing even if i can figure this out my big criticism with the aiming servos right now is they aren't strong enough to hold to steady uh anything that weighs much <laughs> it seems like like they're pretty much just slap some guns on them and they're fine but slap a whole arm on them and you get this and this is funny but not what i'm going for okay i did it check it out so when we lift it up it's there when you put it down it's there. So what I've done is I actually just changed the values of the angle sensor itself. Rather than having the full value of the angle sensor, I defined it to the specific range of motion that I wanted it to be defined. So now the width is set to 180 degrees. So here becomes one and here becomes zero. So now you can see as it's down here, uh, it's pretty much at well, it's hovering between one and zero. I need to actually give it a little bit of a buffer zone here. So if I zoom in a little bit, change the direction slightly so it is overlapping. That should give it some wiggle room. Literally wiggle room because it's wiggling. I want it to be closer to one. Or I can actually increase the range of this to be instead of 45, let's put it at like 60. But yeah, you can see it's like 0.9. And then if I lift the arm up, you can see it approaches uh, zero. And as it goes back down, oh wait, it's going to the negatives. Oh, that's right, it's working though. As it lifts up. All right, so where is it now? It's there. That doesn't make sense that it gets into the, the positives, but as you can see, uh, the angle of the sword, really nice there. And then as I go down, it angles out straighter. And actually, I think I wanna put the angle even more. We go up and then we go down. There we go. That actually kind of looks pretty good. I'm actually really happy with how this looks as an animation. I wish I could do it at full speed, but if I go up to full speed here, as you can see, we've got some problems. Oh, this is so close to being what I want it to be. Just for fun, I'm also gonna put this smoke trail device. Uh, on the same button. Yeah, so the speed needs to be like really, really slow. But yeah, then you can see. Yeah, we got our smoke trail. That's actually pretty cool. All right, then we even have like a blocking animation. All right, so now I kind of want to also apply that to 
this servo here. All right, I'm actually really liking what's happening now. So I applied the same thing to the elbow joint. So now you can see when my arm is up, my elbow bends. And then when my arm goes down, my elbow straightens. So pretty much wherever I'm looking at the camera, the sword is kind of oriented in that direction. But as we go up like in front of us, you can see we kind of end up blocking in a cool way. So it's like a blocking motion. And then what I would just really, really would like if we had a full speed, this would go down really fast and it would be like a really cool swiping motion. But obviously we are very limited by our speed right now or not our speed. Well, we are very limited by our speed, but that's a, a, a byproduct of the strength limitations of these servos. Adding a lot of weight onto the uh, coming off of these makes them very, very shaky. They are a maximum strength. All right, so here's first person. So this is pretty cool, at least as far as like blocking goes. I actually really like how this looks. The only problem is like, if I want to do an actual swing, I got to like look down into my seat so I can't see it happening. One thing that would be kind of really good for this is being able to scale the mouse input. So for instance, like the accumulator has a scale thing, which basically it scales the input to be like a one to one ratio where you press, you press the button once it inputs one, or you could be a one to two ratio where you press the button once and it inputs a value of two. So something like that is kind of the gist I'm looking for for this, where basically I want less mouse movement to go into that. But that's not actually how this aiming servos are working. The aiming servos aren't taking mouse as in, they're not taking your mouse input. So they're not taking the movement of your mouse as an input to tell it how much to move. It's taking the direction that your mouse, that your camera is actually taking your camera, the direction that your camera is looking and then it's giving that the information to try to zero in in the same direction. So no matter what, it's where it's based on where I'm looking, not how much my mouse is moving. But it's just kind of cool to watch it do it. Like I just kind of like built a robotic sword arm and watching it from the first person or even this perspective is pretty cool too. But watching it like lift the sword up and everything, I kind of like, I'm kind of enjoying it. I wonder if I can make this look more like a hand. There we go. Now we got fingers. Only got three of them, but good enough to look cool, right? You know, I don't want to have to do this, but I got to put anchor blocks into this thing. It is just too unstable right now. There we go. That's weird. Why was it doing any of that just now? Because by default, it's set to be programmed to uh, not do anything when it spawns in. And not until I press uh, right click that it starts activating it. And it's only stable in this position. And once it moves out, yeah, you can see even as the sword extends, the stability decreases. But this is pretty cool. Well, I mean, I went into the video intending to make a mouse controlled melee sword slashing robot. What I ended up with is like an extremely prototype proof of concept of it uh, being kind of possible. Actually, we're getting pretty smooth right now. But it more just kind of built a robotic arm for demonstration purposes that follows the mouse movement and I'm pretty happy with how it looks like, oh, look at that movement kind of on the right side too. As you move up and down, it changes the angle of the sword. But yeah, I did some things that uh, I didn't know I would have to do, like using the angle sensor to feed the information into the sword. Being able to use the normalized inputs uh, was really useful for that. I think normalize is almost more valuable than measurement. I'm, I'm really glad that they uh, that they included that. So yeah, if you have any other ideas on how you'd like to see aiming servos experimented with or tried, uh, again, the update officially releases on December 5th, so it'll be available for all the crazy high level builders to get their hands on it. But um, let me know what you're curious about seeing with these. I'm definitely looking for some more ideas to test out with these things. And this one actually, it turned out both better and worse than I expected. Like the animation of it looks really really, really kind of smooth and really lifelike and really nice. It just isn't as stable as I, as I would have hoped and it doesn't have the speeds that I would have hoped for. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.